A story about two friends, best friends forever. The Blanket. I didn't know what I could give her for her birthday. Amanda was dying, so there wouldn't be too many things on that list. It was her 37th birthday, and it would be her last. I almost couldn't bear to think about it, but I had to stay strong. I tried to be a comforting friend. Well, at least I hope I was comforting. Amanda was my best friend since we were five years old, and we were like sisters. I am now her only family. Amanda was an only child, was never married, and had no children. Her parents died when she was five, and she moved in with her grandmother. Her grandmother lived next to us, so that's how we met and became best friends forever. We did everything together, from dance school to prom. The memories are endless. We even went to college together. I got married after college and had Mia and Wesley, while Amanda went on to law school and became a lawyer with the dream of owning her own law firm, a dream that would never come true. About six months ago, it was late spring, Amanda wasn't feeling well and went to see her doctor. When she showed up at my door, I never expected her to say what she did. She looked like she had seen a ghost. Amanda said, not believing it herself, I have cancer, stage four, and there is nothing they can do about it. That was six months ago. All I could do was spend as much time as I could with her. I would read to her, cook for her, really anything she needed. We would watch our shows together and go for drives to see places she had never seen before. Well, now her birthday is coming, and I want to give her something special for her birthday. Something for my heart. Of course, I could buy her comfortable clothes or pretty slippers, but that wasn't enough. A blanket would be nice. I could make her one, but that would take a while. I don't think I could make it in time. I was feeling sad. No, I could do it, I informed myself. If I started today, I could finish it quickly. She could have it in time for her birthday. My spirits lifted temporarily, knowing it was important at least to try. I let my family in on the plan to make Amanda a blanket. and My daughter said, you can do it, Mom. Don't worry. I will take care of everything. You just crochet. I was so proud of her at that moment for stepping up and taking control. It brought a great relief to know that now, with all the help, the blanket was a real possibility. It was three days before her birthday. I had about 72 hours to make it. Why didn't I think of this sooner? I thought, annoyed at myself. I went to the yarn store and tried to plan the project. So many beautiful colors like she is, my best friend. I couldn't bear to lose her, but it was going to happen. I had to make this blanket. Pink, all I could think, she loved pink. From baby pink to fuchsia with some white and greens in it. The blanket would look like bobbles of flowers with green petals throughout it. Perfect, I thought. I purchased the yarn thinking, I hope it's enough. I didn't have time to go back and forth to the store for more. Time was ticking faster and faster, and I'm giving up some time to be with her as well by doing this. I thought that was okay. All I wanted to do was make Amanda the blanket. Nothing else mattered until the blanket was finished. Mia did all the housework for me. My daughter was 16 and quite the young lady already. She was very mature for her age. Even my son Wesley took care of the dog while I sat stationary in my chair. Well, except for my hands, which were like a well-oiled knitting machine, careful not to sunder and lose a moment of momentum. It was dark when I decided to go to my room and continue working on the blanket. Around 8 o'clock, Mia came into my room with a cup of tea. Here, Mom, I thought you might need a lift. Thanks so much, sweetie. Yes, tea is perfect. How's the blanket coming? Mia ran her hand along the finished rose. I am very pleased with the colors I chose, Mia. I boasted. It's beautiful, Mom. Aunt Amanda is going to love it. We both smiled at each other. I could tell that Mia was trying to be strong for me. I gave her a hug as she cheered me on, and then she left the room. Amanda was also very close to Mia, and I know she was feeling the pain of her illness as well. All this that was with me was my yarn and my hook. I took a sip of tea, a deep breath, and continued. Sixty hours to go before Amanda's birthday. I crocheted until 2 a.m., and when my eyes started to close, I realized I just couldn't crochet anymore. I think I was on schedule. I set my alarm for 6 in the morning, and then I put the blanket next to me on the bed, pulled the covers over me, and before I could think any more, I was asleep. As the toast popped out of the toaster, I heard someone coming down the stairs. Mia, what are you doing up, I asked. I couldn't sleep, Mom. 
I keep thinking about Aunt Amanda. I'm going to miss her so much. She began to sob. I tried to think of the right words to com comfort my daughter as I tried to comfort myself as well. It's okay, sweetie. I hugged Mia tightly as she wept. I know, I will miss her too. I tried to hold back the tears. But remember, she is still here with us and she has a birthday in just two days. Mia tried to smile through her tears. Mom, you are making her such a beautiful blanket. What could I possibly give her for her birthday? Well, Mia, you can bake her a cake and make it really special. You are quite the baker, you know. Mia, feeling a little better, said, Okay, I will start looking online for ideas to make the best cake ever. Good. I hugged her excitedly. We will make her the best birthday ever. Mia went back upstairs, and I continued to work on the blanket for the next three hours. It was coming along faster than I thought it would. I took a break and went into the kitchen for some food and more coffee. This would be my schedule for the next 24 hours. On the third day, I sat down and began to think about Amanda. We were five years old when she moved in next door. From that day, we were inseparable. We played outside together, ate together, read books together. When we were in school, people would ask where the other one was if we weren't together. We even got in trouble together. My joy of remembrance would fall to fear and my body just started to hurt. I could feel the pain of my sadness. I began to cry uncontrollably and pray, although I wasn't sure what I was praying for. Was I praying for a man to live so I could have her in my life, or for her to pass on, because I couldn't bear to see her suffer any more? I knew that although the world would lose a special person, heaven would gain an angel. I worked on the blanket for the rest of the day, and at 11 p.m. it was finished. It was like a dream. I wiggled my fingers and thought, my hands aren't even having any pain. I was so relieved. I didn't even feel tired. I couldn't wait to give Amanda her blanket. Crocheting was one of the things we learned to do when we were kids. Her grandma taught us when we were 10. I folded the blanket with more love than I ever could imagine. I laid down and fell into a deep sleep. The alarm went off and I opened my eyes almost unaware of where I was. That's right, I sat up. Amanda, the blanket, her birthday. It's her birthday. I brushed my hand across the blanket, which was on my bed beside me, and smiled. Mom, are you awake? Mia appeared at my door. Yes, honey, I am, I announced. Well, come on downstairs. Breakfast is ready. Ready? Yes, I cooked. All I could think of was how proud I was at the young woman she had become. Mia saw the blanket and came over to my bed. Mom, she said. The blanket is finished. It is beautiful. Aunt Amanda is going to love it. Thanks, Mia. Okay, let's go downstairs and let's have some breakfast. I picked up the blanket and Mia and I headed downstairs to the kitchen. We ate, we got ready, wrapped the blanket in pretty pink paper and went to the hospital. When Mia and I arrived at the hospital, Amanda's door was closed. The nurses stopped us at the desk. There are some complications, her nurse said. What do you mean complications? Is she all right? I could feel all my emotions start to boil. Tell me, what is it? I couldn't help but raise my voice. Mom, Mia said. Relax, let the nurse explain. Mia was always good at keeping her old mom calm. Okay, I'm sorry, I said, still feeling angry. Please tell me what's going on. Amanda had a bad night. We almost lost her. Oh my God, why didn't you call me? I was so confused. We tried to call you, Gray. There was no answer. Oh dear, my phone. I was awful when it came to keeping my phone charged. Amanda always gave me a hard time about it too. The nurse continued. We just want to keep her quiet. That's why the door is closed. It's her birthday, you know. Yes, we know. Can I go in now? I tried to change my mood. Yes, you can go in now. The nurse moved away from the door. I held the blanket tightly as I opened Amanda's door. Mia followed me in. To my surprise, Amanda was sitting up in her bed. She looked better than I had seen her in weeks. Amanda, I said, you look beautiful. She had some color in her face and a beautiful pink bandana on her head with matching pink pajamas. Nice bandana. A present from that handsome nurse out there? I will miss teasing her. Amanda shook her head at me. Really? Happy birthday, sweetie. I kissed her forehead. Amanda smiled. Thank you. I took a step back and looked at Amanda. All the good memories of us came to mind. I could not believe how wonderful she looked. I had a bad night, Gray. I was very frightened. I tried to look confident and said, I know, honey. 
I am sorry I wasn't here. I forgot to charge my phone overnight. Again, Amanda scolded me. Losing the confidence battle, I replied, Ha ha. I tried to hold back the tears. I'm sorry. Don't be silly, Gray. No one has ever been there for me like you have. You are my family. I smiled at Amanda. Aunt Amanda, happy birthday. Mia gave her a big hug. I love you, Aunt Amanda. I baked you a cake. I love you too, Mia. It's pink. Thank you so much. Amanda hugged Mia tightly. Mia continued. It's chocolate on the inside, too. My favorite. Amanda made Mia smile. Mia was so happy she liked the cake. So what do you have there in that shopping bag, Gray? Amanda asked. It's your birthday present, I said with pride. Well, can I have it? She teased again. We both laughed. I carefully placed the bag on Amanda's lap. She pulled out the paper and my eyes widened. Amanda pulled the blanket out of the bag, held it in her hand, and she started to cry. It's beautiful, Gray. She could barely say the words. It looks like a blanket of flowers. I was so relieved. It was perfect. It's so soft, Amanda said, as she ran her hands along the bobbles of color. Wrap it around me, Gray. Wrap it around both of us. I almost couldn't bear my emotions. There were so many surfacing that I couldn't pick one emotion to feel at the moment. Mia interrupted my thoughts. Look at the two of you. You look like a couple of schoolgirls laughing and crying while watching your favorite chick movie. Let me take a picture of the both of you wrapped in the blanket. Amanda and I held each other close and smiled. Mia snapped the photo. Mia and I spent the day with Amanda. At the end of the day, Amanda thanked us for the best birthday ever. Before leaving Amanda, I covered her with the blanket and tucked her in for the night. I kissed her forehead, and then Mia and I went home. Mia framed the picture for me, and I have it on the table in the front foyer so I can see Amanda every day. The picture of Amanda and I wrapped in the blanket would be the last picture that was taken of the two of us. Two years later. It has been two years since Amanda passed, and I miss her every day. Amanda insisted I donate the blanket I made for her to another cancer patient. She wanted someone else to feel the love and warmth the blanket brought her. I wanted so much to keep it, but I did as she said. Mia was now in her senior year of high school and decided she wanted to become a lawyer like her Aunt Amanda. We were looking at colleges and I decided to pull out some old college memorabilia from my own and show them to Mia. I found a picture of Amanda and me when we were five and I began to cry. Mia asked, Mom, what is it? Why are you crying? I showed Mia the photo. It was a picture of Amanda and I wrapped up in a blanket that her grandmother had crocheted. We both had great big smiles on our face. Mia looked at the picture. Look, Mom, you are both in the same pose as in the picture I took of you on Aunt Amanda's birthday. Mom, let me frame it for you. Of course, honey, thank you. Gray looked at the picture again and handed it to Mia. Mia framed the photo of Amanda and me and placed it next to the photo from her birthday. We were just two little girls, best friends forever. Amanda and Gray wrapped up together in a crocheted blanket. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story. For more information on my books and more stories, look in the description. And don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share Mornings with Gracie.